Good evening, welcome to Lucky Five Farms. It's nasty outside, it's gray, it's rainy, not a lot of time to be able to get chores done. I'll show you here in a second what uh, I really should be spraying for weeds right now. Uh, we don't spray our pastures, but we spray a lot of the road areas and, and just some of the areas because as I mentioned before, it's been 10 years since this place was taken care of. A lot of uh, brush, vines, just really nasty stuff that needs to be sprayed away and done. Can't do that because uh, right now in Austin, we're just having just cruddy weather. So what I thought I'd do is do a review. Um, this is on the DR string trimmer. It's a field brush trimmer. Uh, it's not blade, but it's actually string. Um, and I kind of, the reason why I thought I would do a review is this is something I use every single week. I use it on tall weeds. I use it to trim around uh, buildings. Um, I just, it is very, very, very uh, institutional. And so I wanted to point out a few of the things I liked and a few of the things that I didn't like and uh, just give a, an honest review of uh, the string trimmer itself and the DR product. It's been two years now, I've been using it on a weekly basis, uh, parked a little bit during the winter time, but I uh, just wanna share a few highlights and hopefully helps you on your buying decision process. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the DR string trimmer and I've tilted it up so you can see the underside. This is where I think it wins. Uh, you've literally got two sections of string and I'm going to show you how to uh, basically change the string line. Uh, it's super easy. I keep a lot of it in my back pocket or in my overall pocket as I'm doing as I'm uh, you know actually trimming or mowing. But as you can see there are five different positions that you could put the trim the trim line in. You can go low if you want to scalp the ground. You can go higher if you're looking for more of a residential weed. Um, I think this would be actually a good machine for any size property. If you have a lot of trimming to do, maybe you have an acre of ground, a um, bit of a homestead, this works very, very well. It's a Briggs & Stratton motor. It is the no maintenance, no oil change version. Um, I let this sit over the winter, approximately two months. Um, I always put fuel additive to make it through the winter time when it's gonna be inactive, but sat there for about two months and pulled first turn, ready to rock and roll, fires right up. It's a 163cc engine. Um, I believe it's like 6.75 gross pounds of torque. Uh, the wheels, so I would say on, on regular smooth ground, they're not too bad. They are a hard plastic wheel with not much traction. Um, I think it'd be great if there was a way, and I might even do this myself, I might upgrade it a little bit, but to put a rubber, um, maybe a 10 inch wheel that is rubber, could be tubeless or tube, it just would help it go over the rocky terrain that I have. Um, I would say the start and stop breaker bar here, this is what engages the actual rotation of the trim line. As you can see, this pops out. You see it right there? It has popped out since a month into owning this thing. I cannot, I've tried wire tying, I've tried everything. Um, I will probably try, as you can see, this also came loose on this side. Just not a great design. And it takes, also I would say this, this may be on me because um, I do beat it up. I mean, it is rough. It is, we have a lot of rocky, crappy terrain and maybe that's what's caused it to do that. But uh, I'll take a quick pause here. I'm gonna get the trim line and then um, show you how to replace the trim line on this. Okay, the type of trim line that I use is uh, this right here, the Shakespeare .155 Ballistic Twist. Uh, Trying to get a little close there for you. I believe I ordered this off of Amazon if I'm not too mistaken. Um, you can use different sizes. You need to look up on the DR Power website, which I'll include a link. Um, but what I do is I take the distance from the middle of the spindle to here, and I double that, and you'll see why I double that. Um, and that's, then I just use that, cut it, lay that over here. We'll lift this up, and we'll attempt to uh, get a view of doing this. The um, super easy to do, uh, I'm gonna show you, and then I'm going to uh, pull it out here, hopefully. So you just, you wanna grab a hold of it right in here and pull and it just slowly gets that sucker to come right out. And then you can pull it straight that way. So as you see, I needed to change this because I've used it. I normally do the third slot, 
Um, I will also say I'm a big fan of Harbor, Pre Harbor Freight's iconic tool section. Great needle nose. But uh, then what you do is you take your uh, new string line trimmer here and you're gonna punch it. This goes right into the third position. And so we will try to get this sucker to go in here one-handed when I don't really have the machine stopped in any way. So let me pause here and I will get it started and then show you a little bit more. Okay, when you look at this, how they're starting to come out this middle, I've fed each side in and literally you're just gonna yank that sucker through, yank this sucker through. And again, I would normally do this two-handed. Tonight I'm trying to film and two-handed is not gonna be an option. So we'll pull that a little tighter. As you can see, goes right in there. And now these two, this one I'm a little off, but now you're good to go. We would do the other side as well, which I won't do this evening, uh, but then it is ready to cut and it will go through literally anything. So I will more than likely post or include at the end showing what it actually does, but it is one heck of a powerful machine and uh, super easy, as you can see, to maintain. Uh, like I said, the only thing I would change would probably go a little different wheel, which I don't even know is an option and probably doesn't even really matter. And the second piece is just this clutch to start and stop the actual spinning of the uh, weed eater section. It works just fine. You just manually, as you can see, pop it right back in here. Easy for me to say, right? Manually pop it right back in and then you're good to go. So I can probably put a clip on the other, well, nope, there's nothing that comes through there. So we'll figure something out. But that's the only problem I've had out of this. Everything else, it runs and operates absolutely perfectly. So uh, let's put it in action. And uh, hopefully someone has some comments on how they've used it as well. Like I said, this does not have to be a large acreage unit. In fact, I have a trimmer, which I'll also do a review on. It's more of a large acreage unit. Uh, this one would really work great for anyone that has a small homestead, even just small property you're trying to take care of. Um, I was even thinking the other day, if you're a little older or maybe smaller in frame size and don't want to operate a weed eater, this would absolutely work perfect as a weed eater as well. So there you have the review. I wanted to give you a look here and show, I tried to pick a spot on the farm that would uh, best apply to numerous different types of usage. So this is along our, uh, one of our pastures and it's a single pull, starts right up. Um, like I said, very, very reliable. I've had zero problems or concerns with this. Grab the handle and you go. And as you can see, um, this is why I'm passionate about this and you might think I'm goofy, but I'm passionate about the fact that this literally could replace your string trimmer if you're uh, a person that might be smaller in stature, uh, not able to really feel secure operating a string trimmer, a younger kid that's got chores that needs to cut. As you can see, trimming around the, the shooting bench area there, uh, trimming up against the fence, super easy. Um, you're not holding the more up. It's literally riding on that front trimmer ball. Um, and I don't know the exact term of how DR power refers to that, but as you can see, I've got a lot of rocks, um, especially around like this, this water inlet, um, what goes right over it. Super easy, uh, trims right down the line. Um, as you can see, there's a live in a bit of a, um, flood area. If this Creek comes up and it just tears right through all the debris that's left there. Uh, this is about two weeks, I believe of growth that's left along that fence line um, and just rips right through it. Just no problems, does not beat the fence up. So uh, doesn't damage it. You're able to really guide it perfectly as you go down through there. Um, and this is where I think it can work on any residential yard uh, as well as a small homestead. This would be a perfect place. This acre, or it's like two and a half acres here that's pastured in there. Um, works perfect around there. Now I picked this spot because this is the creek bank. Uh, the more 
I, I don't get that close with the tractor and I don't get that close with the zero turn. As you can see here, it just chews it right up. And it's light enough that you can control it. You don't feel like you're on the edge. Uh, I, I just think it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Like I said, um, I have tried doing this with a string trimmer, but then you have to balance, right? And you have to try to get down in there and, and get it just right. Uh, this works out just great, in my opinion. And it also, in my opinion, uh, makes it super quick to get this done. I think in total, I spent about 15 minutes out here this morning just doing some trimming and showing how the machine chews right through. Just works perfect. Light, uh, very maneuverable. This is one hand. Um, and I'm not the world's strongest human, right? So this is, it's easy to control. It allows me to stay up on the bank and not have to balance down. Um, but just honestly, a rock solid more. And I, I thought this would show more of like the farm use, more of a, uh, if you have a larger scale property, this shows more usage here. But as, as you notice, I'm cutting through vines. I'm cutting through thicker grass, weeds. Uh, there is some small tree saplings cuts right through it um, one of the things i love about this also versus using a mower through here um, you'll see i have a lot of stumps because we've done removal through here right this just goes right over the stumps that ball works right around it if you see right there to the left there's a little stump um, the ball works right around it you're not beating the crap out of blades uh, the worst you're doing is chewing up your line and it's super inexpensive easy to replace um, just overall, this is a fantastic tool. Uh, it's something that I think everybody should have in their arsenal. I actually would purchase this over a string trimmer. Uh, this, to me, just does a fantastic job.
of what it looks like once you're done. I have it on a relatively low setting. You saw I, I put it in there on the third space up. There is room to take that up. Um, you might be asking why I don't trim all the way down the bank. This bank uh, needs some erosion control, so I typically try to let the weeds grow um, closer into the creek. Um, got back into the shop here. Uh, I, I cut these and carry these in my overalls, um, but I wanted to show a better view of how to get it done. So you, you just pull this out, right? As you notice there, probably need to adjust my camera just a bit on this, so I apologize, but pull that out feed these right in and you'll see here when I adjust it you literally just have to pull it out pull it forward through there it takes just a couple of seconds pull the thing right through do you notice how quickly that I was able to get this done um, like I said I strongly recommend this this more this is an absolutely fantastic tool Here's the feeding the next through. You see how quickly this go right through. I apologize um, for the camera angle here. Uh, if you want a better view of this, I can absolutely record a short and show you how to get that done. Uh, it works perfectly that way. But you'll see, it takes no time. I typically do this in the field because it burns through these things. I do it in the field, uh, but thought I would bring it in and just give a view. Lock it in the vise there, keep it nice and steady. Uh, it's a great tool. I think everybody should have one. I think you should absolutely consider one of these before you consider a string trimmer. And I'm probably going to get murdered in the comments. But uh, here's what I would ask. Again, please subscribe. Please share this out. Please help me grow uh, the value that I can add to the community. So give me comments of what you want to see. I do a ton of projects from welding to, to just projects around the farm. Can you let me know possibly what you'd want to see, right? Uh, put in the comments something that would interest you. I'll gladly record it. Um, I'll gladly, you know, continue to try to make content that's interesting. I do a lot of goat recordings, and I think people get it's the same, like 10 people that want to watch it, right? So um, just let me know. Uh, like if you look at the hay feeder I'm building over there on your left-hand side, you know, would that be something interesting that you would want to see? Just if, if you could leave comments and uh, I'd be happy to record what whatever everybody wants to see. So thanks again for watching Lucky Five Farms. Please subscribe. Please like. Uh, please share it out. Like I said, point again at this hay feeder for you. I'll probably do a video on that, but uh, look forward to the next time.